DJing for MCs when I grew up. You know, it, and then the party thing did come afterwards, but um, when I was growing up, DJing for the MCs was cool, and being on the radio was corny. So that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to have MCs, and I wanted to, I wanted to be Jam Master J. So I was kind of patterned by it. That's why when they did that in that genre of mixing it up for rappers. And I used to carry records for Chuck Chillout, who was a legendary DJ from the Bronx. And he was on 98.7 Kiss at the time. And I used to drive him around. And if you were the driver, you were guaranteed to hit all clubs. So um, I used to drive Chuck Chill out, hoping, is Chris Lighty here? What's Chris Lighty? Did he leave? He could tell the story and kind of, you know, <clears throat> I hung out, I drove Chuck Chill out all week so I could go to a club called Lat Quarter. Not the Lat Quarter on 96th Street. It was in Manhattan, it was in the 40s, and Red Alert used to play there. Red Alert used to have on Burgundy Lees, suede Adidas, a t-shirt, his hair was cut perfectly, and he had on jewelry. This to me was the epitome of fresh. Like, this was, I'm sorry, he had on shell toe Adidas with the burgundy stripe. I remember it well. So, this particular club was where you saw Eric B and Rock Kim. I mean, I want to tell the story right before that. There was a club before that that Red Hat, it was called the Roxy, where uh, Ben Bonner and him used to play. Like, that's one thing. But Latin Quarter, <clears throat> I don't know if anyone here has ever been to the Tunnel Light Club. I patterned that whole thing off of Latin Quarter. It was a club. Chris, Chris Lighty used to be there too. And it was a club where you could see the rappers and their jewelry was glistening. And I used to see day to day and I saw Slip Rick coming in one time with so many jewels. It was so amazing to me. And Red Alert, like, was, Red Alert was playing these records, but it was just something about that room, man. When he's rubbing those records, and those artists are coming in and they're going into him and saying what's up. At the time, I was working at the Marriott um, uh, frying French fries and cooking burgers. And I used to try to get off there early to go to Latin Quarter. And I saw in there one time, Everyone's aware of KRS One is, right? Yeah. <clears throat> I saw it in KRS One Battle Melly Mel, which was amazing. I saw um, KRS perform another time at Bismarck. You know, KRS One was on the bill, and Bismarck got on the stage and said. That was great, but I'm gonna be here next week and threw on Nobody Meets the Biz and started dancing. And sent that place <laughs> so crazy. <laughs> but I patterned my whole movement off of the Latin Quarter. It was, it was about trying to get in free. Girls trying to see you get in free because they don't think you're somebody even though you're a biscuit. Then you had to get to the bar and hopefully have a drink ticket because you had no money. Because you had that, whatever money you had in your bar was to get the car out of the lot. So it was uh, that whole experience. I saw MC Search, and I, I, people familiar with MC Search is third base. He sold four million, five million records. This guy was a different type of biscuit in that quarter. <laughs> Chris, do I lie to you now? <laughs> listen, listen, 
I was a bigger biscuit than him. Remember, I'm in there smelling like cheeseburgers and fries. So I'm already in a, I'm not even on his biscuit level. I'm carrying records and that's it. But it's unfortunate that there's no video, I don't think, of this, of this, um, of this place. But this was, this was, right? Every paradise was key. Every rapper, you know, did, you know Eric, Eric B used to drive a, um, a Rolls Royce. Listen, I know there's people out here right now with the Phantoms and all of that. He was driving a Rolls Royce back then, 86. And it was parked in front, rolled off. And uh, Rakim never came out. It was always Eric B. And the biggest star I'd ever seen coming in was DMC at the time. And my Adidas was out. And he was standing in the booth. And every, the whole nightclub stared at him the whole night. And they never, it didn't matter. Those, that was what was instrumental for me. That was my life after that club. I, I, that, I knew that's what I wanted to do. I want to do this. I want to be like Red Alert. I want to be in the booth. And I want to play music. And the tunnel, my dream came true. That was my chance to have my life on. What did you pattern, if anything, what did you pattern your radio show after? I'm like, uh, I'm like Churchill out, Red Alert, Wally, Mr. Magic, you know. Uh, I'm a very big Kid Capri fan, you know. And uh, everyone is aware of who Kid Capri is, right? I don't have to break that down for you. Kid Capri is the greatest DJ to ever touch down on Earth, ever. Okay? Okay. So, the, that's um, all of those people I was listening to and admiring. I never had hate in my blood when I was coming through. Right, Chris? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, you know, some people are envious. I was amazed to see Kid Capri and, and um, Red Alert. I just, I, I never thought I'd make it. I never even figured what it would be like to make it. I never figured what it would be like to have more than hundred dollars in my pocket. I just love what they did. So those, that's who I patterned, you know, afterwards. What do you want people to take out of this talk here tonight, as far as the Bronx, as far as, you know, just everything we've heard tonight, you know, from you, from Rick? Um, the Bronx is sometimes on um, sometimes overlooked because uh, sometimes we're not always current with, with, uh, with artists of the moment all the time. I mean, there's a lot of artists that came out of the Bronx, but you know, people always scream Brooklyn, but Brooklyn is like 50 times bigger than the Bronx, so of course there's going to be more rappers than Brooklyn. People never do the math, but um, uh, you know, who hurt? is uh, instrumental in, in uh, from the breakbeats and what things came about. And man, if there's anything I can say about the Bronx is um, let's always remember the, the person who, you know, created taking, not take so much taking the break to the beginning, but finding a funky break was cool. And He's, I mean, am I saying this right, Chris? He's the, he's the known to man. <laughs> you know, there's always, there was always people who were a little bit prior, but they didn't have that vision. Kuhlberg was proud to make noise and be noticed with a particular breakbeat. So, 